Hi everybody. In this video we'd like to highlight why receptor regulation and signal transduction mechanisms are important to the clinician in order to understand the impact of drugs on their patients. At the very least, we hope that you'll appreciate that receptors and intracellular signaling are not static processes but can be quite influenced by both the nature of the endogenous signaling they are responsible for and are influenced by our use of drugs to manipulate these systems. As a result, in many cases, the clinician needs to try to continue hitting a moving target that is adapting to the therapy itself. Signal transduction is usually accomplished with one or more of the following key cellular processes, each of which results in allowing a signal, in this case a drug, to convey its effect from outside the cell to the intracellular compartment. Transmembrane receptors are classified as either ionotropic, that is linked to ion channels, or metabotropic that is linked to biochemical processes. Intracellular receptors include cytosolic and nuclear receptors. We've already addressed in prior videos how the connection between receptor binding and effect is made within the cell, and now we'll focus on the clinically relevant biological processes occurring after a drug binds to a receptor. Looking more closely at the different types of signal transduction systems, let's start with ionotropic receptors which are drug ligand gated transmembrane ion channels. These include the gamma aminobutyric acid or GABA linked chloride channels and the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors linked to sodium channels. The second receptor type based upon signal transduction are called metabotropic receptors that act directly or indirectly on signal transduction enzymes or are linked to enzymes that have an extracellular domain recognizing a drug in an intracellular domain that catalyzes the biochemical response. This receptor subtype includes what we call G-protein coupled receptors or GPCRs, which can be GS, that is stimulatory, GI, that is inhibitory, or GQ, that is linked to the enzyme phospholipase C-beta and impacts intracellular calcium handling. Here we show the prototypical adenylate cyclase linked signaling of, for example, the beta adrenergic receptors. Following binding by a receptor agonist, the G alpha S, that is G stimulatory subunit protein, engages the adenylate cyclase enzyme, which increases intracellular cyclic AMP, leading to phosphorylation and activation of protein kinase A, leading to a cellular response. Other receptors can be guanylate cyclase linked. In this case, the plasma membrane receptors have guanylate cyclase activity and the cyclic GMP formed activates protein kinase G, which phosphorylates proteins associated with cellular action. Examples of this type of receptor include atrial natriuretic factor and nitric oxide directly or via muscarinic receptors. Another type of metabotropic receptor, such as the insulin receptor, possesses intrinsic tyrosine kinase enzyme activity and therefore can transfer a phosphate group from ATP to a protein in the cell, in this case insulin receptor substrate 1, IRS1. This activates additional proteins via phosphorylation, leading to the translocation of glucose by GLUT4 transporters. Receptors of this type can be regulated in a variety of ways through phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. Finally, there are intracellular receptors, either nuclear or cytosolic. These generally bind to cytosolic or nuclear proteins, which are binding to a DNA response element, which in turn results in inhibition or activation of messenger RNA, and finally, protein transcription or its inhibition. Some of the most common examples of these are the lipophilic hormones, like thyroid and steroid hormones. Regardless of the type of receptor, both receptor and signal transduction systems can adapt to the chronic agonist stimulation or in some cases lack of stimulation of the system as seen during antagonist administration or depletion of endogenous agonists. In summary, the receptor signal transduction systems can be characterized as follows. Firstly, ionotropic receptors, for example, GABA receptor that's linked to a chloride channel or the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor that's associated with sodium channels. The second is metabotropic receptors like 
G protein coupled receptors that are linked to a G protein that can regulate enzymes like adenylate or guanylate cyclase or even ion channels and those like the insulin receptor that are linked to kinase enzymes that can regulate cascades of phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. And finally, we have the nuclear receptors, like the lipophilic hormone receptors for thyroid hormone and steroid hormones, as well as others. These regulate messenger RNA transcription rates, leading to increases or decreases in protein synthesis. Music